Hello again, everybody. Zack Attack is here with my WWE. <laughs> WrestleMania 34 review. I can't believe I'm sitting here. And I am like wipes. This weekend is taking its toll on me. You're gonna be watching Wing of Honor. Uh, I haven't watched Wing of Honor yet. So I won't give a pop up event of the weekend. I will give a WWE event of the weekend. I think we know after tonight who won. Uh, yeah. So, you know, watching Hall of Fame on Friday. Watching NXT yesterday and now today, seven hours. Too damn long, in my opinion. This mania dragged the last. Mania was like us. You know, we were all hyped and we had a rousing start. The first four matches were like really good. Three out of the first four were awesome. Two of the first four were match of the nights. You know, a lot of people debate about which match was the true match of the night. But there is one thing those two best matches have in common. They had women in it! Who would have thunk it? Two really good women's matches. The mixed tag and the SmackDown women's title. And then after the mixed tag, the, the stamina of the WWE and our stamina went steadily downhill. With a dream match that was nothing but a disappointment and a predictable match actually shocking. For all the wrong reasons. There's some good and bad about the main event. A lot of bad though. Um, a lot of new champs crowned. Couple interesting questionable booking decisions. And as you see by subtitle, New Orleans. By the way, this is of course in New Orleans, it's Louisiana, Mercedes Benz Superdome. New Orleans ain't the place for streaks to thrive. Things come to die at Mania, especially if it's in New Orleans. And uh, not so happy. Who's that? That. And also, spoiler alert: no cash in. Maybe Tuesday. So it was tough to rate this Mania because I was gonna rate it so high because after the first four matches, it was like, man, this Mania can't go down in flames, which it did. Especially like our some, like I said, some questionable booking decisions. Both women matches, winners, man. Um, I'll give this one 6.5. I am deducting a few points for the last two hours dragging. You know, after the fourth match, and a match that did happen. Short but sweet, but it happened. The bill actually paid off. And it was the white booking decision. Looking back in hindsight, it was the white booking move for a certain match that we thought wasn't going to happen, but did. So, but after that, you know, some good little moments here and there, but nothing really good after that mixed tag. And of course, main event. For the 30 year old, it might be the worst main event in history. Did an okay fight, but it was boring. The crowd was trolling it. Because they thought they knew who was going to win. Look at that. So, um, another spoiler alert NXT won. NXT TakeOver was better than Mania. It was a shorter show and it was more exciting. But this mania, that's the problem with manias. They are so they want to get all the talent in. You know, they want to get everybody in. But unfortunately, a big roster means a long bloated mania. There was a good moment, but it dragged, especially the last couple hours. But let's start off with the pre-show. Two hour pre-show. So one hour pre-show from now on. So it was the Under the Giant Battle War open us off. At least. Two things that was good about this. One, happy it wasn't the Cruiserweight title going first like it did last year. And two, happy that at least the stadium was mostly full, not half empty. Um, a lot of participants in there. Too long the name. You, you know, you had a revival, the Ascension, two teams that should be badass heel teams, but they got fucking buried by the company. Yeah. My pick, Dolph Ziggler, man, I sucked at predictions. I fucking sucked. I was like, three for ten. <laughs> I was bad in my predictions. I was bad. <laughs> I was bad in my NXT predictions. I was four for five. The only match I got wrong was the tag team title match. Because I picked two people for the North American title. 
cheating, but one of them won, which is Adam Cole by Bank. Because he got Adam Cole Wickershay. But tonight, I sucked to my predictions. But, uh, he had a couple surprises. I uh, think this one was first, because he had no major, no no NXT call-ups in the uh, men's battle royal. You did have some people returning from layoffs, like you saw some call there, all troops back from injury, and back from rehab, and having a child with Maria Menudos, not Menudos, Canales, Mike Canales. So it's cool to see Mike back, even though it was a little bit of the battle, or at least back in it after a year gone with this stupid love gimmick. With his wife's book and battling his demons. Glad to see him back there. Um, you also at the club. Woken Matt Hardy in there. Titus and Apollo. Fashion Police. Keith and Wino. And for this opening matchup. Also gave him Benjamin. There's so many missed to watch. There were some cool little things. In this battle. It's a typical battle royal. It's decent. There's a little action. There's some good little spots. Uh, they had like a, like a mini Golden Truth reunion. With Gold Dust and all Truth. Kind of dancing with each other. But then Gold Dust would eliminate off to and start dabbing. And then a miss swap eliminated some people, but then got double eliminated by Kane. After uh, they eliminated the revival. And then he got eliminated by Kane right after that. Because I saw him eliminated, I was like, Kane's behind him. I was like, no, 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 they'll be eliminated next, aren't they? I was right. <laughs> and he also tossed it up on Don Go. And miss swap. I guess a couple of eliminations there. Uh, it came down to Kane, Woke and Matt Hardy, and the last two winners, Mojo Wally and Baron Corbin. Uh, Mojo was literally Zach Wider. So, uh, but the final three was Mojo and Baron and Woke and Matt Hardy. So, as Matt was dominating early, got some just a faint sign. He got pummeled by the two remaining guys besides him. So, as uh, Corbin and Wally were going to probably double team to eliminate Matt Hardy. All of a sudden, the lights went out. Bray Wyatt showed up. Fresh from being put into the lake of reincarnation during the final deletion. This is the first appearance since then. But it was kind of like himself. You know, he was still kind of Bray Wyatt-ish. It wasn't like dumped into the lake of reincarnation as reincarnated as Husky Harris or Iris Jr. as many people were suspecting. He even taking a long of a break. It was like three weeks off. And he's back as Bray Wyatt, but a Bray Wyatt on the Woken side. He took out, I think he took out Baron with the uh, Sister Abby before helping Matt Hardy win. Since Bray wasn't technically in the match, Matt Hardy won at the limited Corbin. Like, Mo Mojo got eliminated by Hardy, and then the final leadership was as a Baron Corbin after the end of days by. Not, not, he didn't do end of days though. But I'm talking about the Sister Abigail by Bray Wyatt. So, welcome Matt Hardy won. Cool for him. You know, especially after last year, returning with his brother Matt, uh, Jeff, one of the best moments of Mania last year, and now winning this other giant battle royal. Because I didn't know who the heck to pick, because I was going to pick Rusev if he was in it. But I was all for one. Dolph Ziggler lost. He had a good showing. He got... Coming so close to being eliminated. So many, there were so many close calls with him. And Jimmy finally got eliminated later on. So, uh, they were also a cool little spot. Uh, Gold does that Shadow Dreams on both Dillinger and uh, Ziggler. And also, then, I'm going to mention when Zach Wagner got eliminated, he was going for the Bolski boot, and that's when Mojo eliminated him. So, that's how Mojo eliminated Zach Wagner. Now, on to one of my favorite matches in the pre show. The match I was looking forward to the most in the pre show. Should have been on the main show, but hey, what can you do? I would have had that match instead of the wall attacking title match, especially the way it was booked. Or the wall attacking title match should not have been the co-main event. Anyway, if the co-main event was going to lead to something big, it should have been the co-main event. But the way it was booked, should have been a lot of card. Get to that later. It was, of course, the finals of the Cruiserweight title tournament. Mustafa Ali taking on Cedric Alexander. Uh, it wasn't as good of a match I was hoping it was going to be. But it was still a very emotional, good match between these two guys. Good striking, great abilities. Uh, Cedric did some big splash moves. Got a big dive early on. But the two friends exchanged a couple of Spanish flies. They had two Spanish flies in a row. Cedric did one to Mustafa on the ground. And then Mustafa did one to Cedric off the top rope. So and they were like in succession almost. Like the first fly and then like maybe like two minutes later did another one. 
But after that, Ali was setting up. He did try to do the uh, 05 form, but he did do it. He didn't nail the first time. But Cedric would surprisingly kick out of that attempt. But uh, Ali did try to do it again, but uh, Cedric went out of the way at the second attempt. And, uh, and Alexander was also playing for his love ball check a couple times. He was even teasing on the top rope once, but never did It'll come to fruition. As both these guys were tossing each other around with some big punches and moves. The ending came as Alexander and Ali was exchanging little words to stay down to each other. But then Senator would blast Ali with a big move, with a big punch, before finally connecting with the Lombard check in the 1 2 3 victory for Senator Alexander. I wanted, like, I'm a big Senator Alexander person. You know what I mean? Like, I was going to predict, like, he was kind of predictable a while because he was setting him up for this, you know, because he was uh, supposed to feud with Enzo for the title. And his feud kind of went up and down with Enzo getting sick once, then getting fired before the Royal Rumble, leading up to this tournament. And uh, then I was like, maybe Ali could win it because I like Ali too, but I was over too. So, Alexander won. Uh, by the way, Waiting for the uh, Battle Royal was 2.0, by the way. 2.0 for the Men's Battle Royal. For the Screws with Tunnel match, I'll get about 3.3. Still a fun match. You know, good action there. Crowd was kind of into it. At least the crowd was full for it. Mostly full for it. So, uh, there you go. Now, on to our Women's Battle Royal. No longer named at the Moolah, yet they have a trophy made of women's fallopian tubes. I am wearing the only women's shirt I have. In my clutch, Becky Lynch, she entered first, and everybody else got like a plain entrance. The only ones that got real entrances were Becky Lynch, Sasha, and Bailey. There were some NXT women in there, and some C-Dub-C women. Women's in the NXT and the C-Dub-C, you had Kavita Devi, you have the C-Dub-C winner, Kyrie Sane, Dakota Kai, Bianca Belair, that was cool seeing her in there, Tanawa Conti, the Brazilian girl, had a short-lived alliance with the Undisputed Era. And Peyton Royce from the iconic duo. Where the hell was Billy? Did her breast implants take longer to recover from than Peyton's? I heard they both got boob jobs. But hey, women's choice. So this battle war was a little bit more funner than the guys. Especially a lot more surprises. In a very, uh, Equally shocking ending, as the men's did with the Bray Wyatt one time to help Woken Matt Hardy. There was some suspicion about them being a team, and now they are a team. You know, after Bray got awoken from the lake of reincarnation. So there you go. Um, yeah, Kyrie Sane doing the insane elbow, and the NXT girls kind of like aligned and pun to pun took over half the royal, half the battle royal, eliminating a lot of people. Even Absolution did well early on. Although Carmella was the first eliminated. Like, everyone teamed up on Carmella eliminated her first. I thought that was a sign for her cashing in, but as I mentioned, no cashing. Anyway, um, they did a book and a couple teamed on. Like, there was some double team moments. Like, everyone piled up on one person twice, but then it just came down to regular stuff. And these eliminations were done by Absolution, but they got eliminated early on. With Pains on commentary and, uh, Beth Phoenix on commentary. Uh, Luna Garcia was a guest announcer. By the way, for the uh, Battle Warrior, J.O. and the King doing commentary for the Battle Warrior under the Giant. I hate to say it's J.O. was better here than in New Japan. Anyway, didn't mess up anybody. It sounded more lively. Anywho, um, after the brief takeover from the invaders that were from the NXT roster, a lot of people went through the middle rope, including those that we thought were limited, but Eventually, one, especially that would come into the ending. Um, not as good as a battle or as a war in one book. Well, hey, a battle war is different than a war in one book. In a battle war, everyone's in there at one time. War in one book, it's like a comparatively two minutes or every one minute, like last this year. It came down to the, I think a lot of people predicted the final two. Sasha and Bailey came down to them. And uh, they were pulled a little bit before Bailey went eliminating Sasha. And I thought, yes, I finally got a prediction right. Bailey won! Yes! Bailey won! But then we found out that 
one of the women, because I saw one shot of the floor that Naomi was on the ground. I thought Naomi got eliminated. But I didn't see, and nobody else probably did see, that Naomi was never eliminated. That she was underneath the bottom rope. She didn't go over the top. So technically, Bailey did not win. So Naomi came from behind, nailed Bailey with the wheel view, and yes, people, she eliminated Bailey, and she became the winner of the inaugural Women's Battle Royal. And for the second year in a row, Naomi won a media match. She won last year in the SmackDown Women's Title Match in her hometown of Orlando, Florida. This year, in Nolens, she would capture the, um, the Women's Battle Royal trophy. Um, kind of a weird booking decision there. Like, I love Naomi. But they've been building towards a Bailey sasha feud for so long. The best women's feud that doesn't didn't have a proper match. Hopefully it makes up for it in the next couple of pay-per-views. You know, that feud's been so good. The story's been great. She really wanted them winning. You know, enhance the story. Maybe they don't need a trophy to enhance the feud. But Naomi winning was kind of questionable. I like Naomi, but kind of weird. 3.0 for the women's battle royal. Better than the guys, though. Once again, you know what I mean? Women's match has been better than the guys lately. No, women's Royal Rumble was better than the guys in the the um, women's Battle Royal was better than the guys, so there you go. Now on to uh, the main show. Start out with some girls singing the uh, Nash, uh, America the Beautiful. And even the crowd was saying, who? Who are they? Um, I don't even know who sung them. Some like girls. Chloe and Haley. They said good though. They said good though. So on to opening match. That requires the first of many. I'm warning you now. I have a t-shirt for mostly everything. There's only, out of the main card, there's only like one, two, three, four, five, six, six matches I don't have a t-shirt for. So I have a t-shirt for all but six matches. And here's the first of the t-shirt changes. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Yes, we would start off with the triple threat match. For the Intercontinental Championship as The Miz, freshly met their new daddy, will be defending against both Seth Rollins and Wangler Finn? Wow, what a letdown. I thought it would come out as Demon Balor. I know they didn't hint towards a Demon Balor appearance, but I thought, hey, maybe it would be a surprise. But instead, he came out as Wangler Finn with his LGBT supporting new shirt. So maybe they're going with that gay storyline. Stupid. I mean, they want to make a Finn gay. But since they can't make Finn's character gay, people are against it, including Triple H. Hey, let's make his t-shirts supporting, you know, the, the rainbow-colored shirts. It was a cool little empowering moment with them coming out with a bunch of the people from the LGBT community. You know, I support those people. I have no prejudice against those people. But, we've been more awesome. Finn Balor's first mania. Finally, after missing last year's mania because of injury. To finally come to that mania. It'd be Demon Balor. Yes, I would say it did not fit, but he should have been a demon. Should have been Demon Balor. And that means, after I saw that, I was like, he's not winning now. I picked Balor to win, but I was like, after I see him not come out as a demon, I was like, he's losing now. Because <laughs> he doesn't come out as a demon. Anywho, uh, the match was a really rousing opener. You know, great way to get the crowd going. Great attitude from all three gentlemen. Miz looked really good in the building on his big flashy moves. Including a couple times at the finger form. And like I said, there was, there was a lot of good action in this man. Both guys, the challenges did pretty well together, going one on one. There was another call back to the buckle bomb that injured Finn Balor at SummerSlam. Finn was teased by Seth to be buckle bomb on the barricade again. Second time in less than a week that he teased that call back. And then everyone went for all the finishers, including uh, Miz and his court coaching finale. And there was one pinfall that was broken up by Finn and the coup de gras. And that was like mid towards towards the finish. But before we get to that, like I said, some other good spots. 
Wilds in a good spot. Splash to bring up a submission hold. Doing one of the miss attempts at the finger four to Finn. Everyone did well. Bound in 1916. Of course, uh, Wilds teased many times the curb stomp. And he did a couple super kicks as well. But let's get to the end. The end of the coup de gras. At the Miz would deliver the scorecard to be on the Wallens. Coup de gras on to Miz to pick up the count from Ballard. Then he would do another coup de gras on the Miz. But then Ballard would be taken out with the curb stomp. On to Ballard. As he was ready to pin Miz. The Miz got back up. He ate a curb stomp. And a one, two, three victory for Seth freaking Rollins. Yes. Yes, Finn needed to win more in my mind, but I'm happy with Rollins winning. You know what I mean? Uh, Rollins is supposed to feud well, well, we thought he was going to feud with Roman over the Universal title, but after seeing the end of the night, <laughs> maybe that's why Seth won. Because there was a lot of rumors about him feuding with Roman over the Universal title, and Roman were to win at Mania. Which a lot of people, including myself, saw coming. But maybe that's why he won Icy Tunnel Match. 3.5 for this one. Really good. Really good. Really good rousing opener. Great story from all three guys. And there was a couple of shots with uh, Cena in the crowd. They really played up Cena not getting a match with Tinker and really playing up him saying, I'm going to be a fan. And he was in the crowd for the majority of the first matches and most of the second match. Like Takeover. A lot of people be debating about which match was the true match of the night. As in TakeOver, if you didn't see my review, which I applaud NoDQ.com for favoring on their Twitter. So that's cool. Got a little favorite from NoDQ, a great wrestling dirt cheap page. But it's cool to see them. They like my video. They like to cut my videos in the past on Twitter. So I think that. A little shout out to that. But NXT TakeOver, if you wanted, if the... You know what I mean? When it comes to like the best violent match, the most spot heavy match, that would be the ladder match for the North American title. An insane opener. But if you want to talk about the best match that had the most story, the best psychology, the most emotion, that would be the Gargano Chumper match. For this video, if you want, you know, when it comes to being the most entertaining match of the night, the most exciting match of the night, that would have to be the mixed tag. But when it comes to pure athleticism, if you're crispus and great emotion and great action and great storytelling, it would have to be in a SmackDown Women's title match between Charlotte and Asuka. The Empress of the Mall against the Queen. Title against the Streak. Kind of spoil it out a little bit, but hey, I'll go with it. Really awesome women's title match. The best women's match in two years in Mania. Win Charlotte at 32. Despite a little bit of lack of bell, these two delivered. There was no botches at all. Everything was crisp and smooth and awesome. Great back and forth with these two women. They did deliver the match of a lifetime. The Dream Women's match. This Dream match, even with no hype, was better than AJ Nakamura. Anywho, despite that match having some big hype. I was getting a couple of hip attacks. Uh, there were some cool spots in this match, including a short... Trying to do one of her famous moon salts. She tried to do it, but she got caught midair by Asuka with a submission hold. That was a cool little spot there, but it bought the offside. And Charlotte even did her own little submission besides the figure four, of course, through the Boston Crab. And like I said, there was some fun action. You know what I mean? It was crazy. This match. This was the match they deserved. You know, it's a long match. Almost 14 minutes. Well, this is a match with these two women. The rest of the match, they should have been allowed to. You know, they broke the restrictions. Because last year's women's matches were treated like shit in comparison to Mania 32. Great building for the feuds for the women's titles and good matches. Last year's women's matches, less build. And the matches were as bad as the builds. This time, the build for this one was decent, but the match lived up to a good effort. You know, great hip attacks from Oscar a couple times. And there was another Spanish fly, this side from Charlotte, up the top rope. Man, that was nasty Spanish fly from Charlotte up the top rope. That was awesome. And Charlotte even tried a natural selection a couple times. And both girls were going for submission, especially Oscar going for the Oscar lock. 
It was turned to a spear by Charlotte. And then Charlotte would eventually put Asuka into the figure four, turning it into the figure eight, and a sight we thought would never happen. Did happen tonight. Asuka tapped out. Wow. A lot of people be debating about whether or not it's like when all good streaks end. Whether it was Goldberg streak, or especially the streak that broke four years ago in New Orleans at Mania 30, Tinker Streak. There was always going to be that debate. Should the streak really have lasted longer? Should it have ended there? It wasn't the white person. A lot of people loved the match, hated the fact Oscar did not win. And it was the first big Mania match. I loved her entrance, by the way. And, uh, really all back to inches, but I love Charlotte's entrance. We were with the flare theme playing and the throne being brought out. Seth's entrance, I'm going to mention that. Seth's entrance was cool too with the Sub Zero theme outfit and the eyes on the screen. So, uh, yeah. So, should the streak continue? Well, it ran its course, maybe it was eyes. Was Charlotte the right person to beat it? Yes. Charlotte was the right person to beat it. Especially when Charlotte lost the Mixed Match Challenge final to Asuka and Miz on Tuesday. Who would have thunk it? They won the Mixed Match Challenge, and they both lost their matches at Mania. So. But yeah, 4.2 for this one. And at the end of the match, Asuka grabbed the mic, and she said, rephrasing her catchphrase, that nobody was ready for Asuka but she said Charlotte was ready for Asuka. And they had a little hug. So good moment there. Great showmanship. Great match. If you don't like this match, you are an idiot. This is one of the best singles women's matches in Mania in a long time. It was crisp. There was no mistakes. Everything was smooth. And it was perfect. Mwah. Great effort for both women. Applaud these two. Now, uh, yes, people. It's time for another t-shirt change. Because it's time for the Fatal 4-Way for the United States Championship. It will be, of course, Randy Orton defending against Bobby Roode, Jinder Mahal. These are entrance for him with the Indian dancers and stuff. And the fourth man in that Fatal 4-Way, I'm glad he got added. Rusev Udria, Rusev Machka. Ah. Rusev Day! <laughs> yeah, Rusev. Um, this was a okay match. Especially coming after that awesome women's match. There was no way that these four were going to top it. You know what I mean? There was no, no possible way that was going to happen. You know what I mean? But they did the damnedest um, to top it. Rusev was over as hell. They were chasing Rusev there about the pre-show. And once again, Rusev was over as hell. He had a great moment to shine in this match. It was a big match that kicks the people. But everyone looked okay here. Uh, Rude looked okay in here. In his first Mania match, he shined for his big moments during, of course, his big spine buster and numerous attempts at the glorious DD team. And uh, there was some double team, including uh, Mahal and Rusev being reluctant team. They were former partners. But then Rusev would kick Mahal and beat him up a little bit. Then over to come back with some big moves, including Hangman's DDT onto Rusev. And then here comes the RKOs. As uh, English got into the way, but anyways, there's no DQ because it was a fatal four way. He got RKO. And RKO on Mahal and Rusev. And then Rude would nail the glorious DD team. And then Mach got kicked from Rusev to Orton. And then Mahal got kicked. And then, as the kick started happening, Rusev is last man standing. The crowd was on their feet. They felt it. That yes, Rusev's over. And he was going to win the United States Championship again. After losing that same title at Mania 31 against John Cena. So then the Mach Pose. He was waiting to set up the accolade unto Jinder Mahal. 
But then the Singh brother got on the apron, forcing Rusev to break the hold and delivering a monster kick to the Singh brother. But unfortunately, that distraction was capitalized by Jinder Mahal as he would make Rusev run straight into the Colossus. And he fucking won the U.S. title. Probably one of the dumbest booking decisions besides Strowman was Jinder Mahal winning over Rusev. Yes, he's over as a heel. In that we hate you really heat. Like, you got like Roman heat. You know what I mean? Great way to troll the fans and have her be a champion. Okay. But come freaking on. Rusev was threatening to leave the company. That's why I went. That's why he was inserted to the U.S. title match. You know, he, he threatened a release. He asked for his release. He got inserted in this match. He's all for his hell. Both shells are running like crazy. Yet, not only did he lose, he ate the fucking pin. He ate the pin. Come on, guys. You had a guy lose that we wanted to lose, but Rusev didn't win. So, we're going to win any. You know, like, we had the guy we wanted to lose, actually did lose. Got a guy who wanted to win, did not win. And Rusev, uh, 3.0. You know what I mean? Out of the first four matches, this part of the weakest. It was okay. Especially a freaking Mahal winning. Which my dad was probably the only one in this country, let alone the world, cheering. Besides everyone from India and Canada. And I'll say it after you, too, because he's a gender fan. I don't know why. He's a good heel, though. That's what my dad likes him. Because he just walks like a heel, talks like a heel. He's just a great heel character. Despite being a foreign guy. But anyway, foreigner means heel. Unless you're Rusev. But still, you know, Rusev should have won. Now, on to what many people say is the best match of the night. Besides Oscar Charlotte. Wonder Rousey and Kurt Angle against Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. Going into this match... There was a lot of hype to this. You know, it was Wilde Wild Rousey's first Mania match. First overall WWE match. Angle's first Mania match in a decade. A lot of people were anxious about this match because Triple H and Angle haven't wrestled in a while. Stephanie is the first ever Mania match. I was right. I think I said in my prediction show that Stephanie's been involved in Manias, but she's now made a pop a match till now, which is crazy. She's had a SummerSlam match before a Mania match. Crazy. So, it was, and of course, the biggest question mark was one of the Rousey. Was she going to do well? Was she going to suck? With one little blemish, a botched suplex, Ronda Rousey Rousey, wearing Piper's jacket again, the same one that she wore at the Royal Rumble, and wearing a custom-made skirt outfit, Ronda Rousey actually did great. And the match was actually pretty damn good. And fun and entertaining. And the most the crowd was into a match most of the night. You know, it was slow going and angle and uh, Triple H were first. You know, they were slow going. Hey, they're old and then wrestled a proper match since Survivor Series. But then, of course, the Cat and Mouse game, Stephanie and Ronda Rousey would begin. And it was just, there were so many good spots to name, including another callback, a callback to last year's Mania, where Triple H almost hit Stephanie. Kind of like when he inadvertently hit her during his match against Rollins, and she went through a table. There's a little callback to that. And then uh, there was some great ball on the outside. Like, Rousey took some big bumps. Selling was decent. And then when she got back alive, she beat the crap out of Stephanie. Jumped in the old ball a couple of times. Some good striking. She even beat up on Triple H. She uh, struck Triple H. And when she was striking him in the corner. I was yelling, Sports Center, Sports Center, Sports Center. And then she even put the arm on to Prince at one point. It was just, the crowd was eating it up. And she, like I said, she looked good in there. You know, the only botch, she had like a sloppy super to stop any. There's the only one I remember seeing that was like a botch. But Wowsy did well. Wowsy's got a future in WWE. She actually. Did well. Angle Triple H did well. Of course, everyone did all the finishers. You know, Angle did an angle slam. Triple H showed a couple of pedigrees. Even at one point, uh, Triple H and Stephanie even tried a double pedigree to Angle and Rousey, but never happened. Angle went through the announce table one time. There's so many good spots. It was, it was just a fun 
match, a match no one expected to be good. We got to do the ending, but the white team winning, at least Triple H's ego let the new person go over him on like what happened with him and Sting at Mania 31. And the ending came when Angle finally put Triple H into the ankle lock, and Stephanie got sucked in at last to the on ball and quickly tapped out. So there you go. There you go. Ronda Rousey wins. So, uh, there you go. 4.0. When it comes to like, the most athletic match, the most sound match, you'd have to be Oscar Charlotte. When it comes to the most exciting, most thrilling, most entertaining, Rousey and Angle against Triple H and Stephanie. We all kind of thought Angle and Rousey deserved to win. But we didn't think the match was going to be that good. Or as Triple H would say, that damn good. And the first prediction I got right. Finally. You know, I was like, oh, for five. You know, like, oh, for six. You know, I, lo I was wrong in all the pre-show matches. Wrong in the IC title match. Wrong in the women's title match for SmackDown. Wrong on the US title match. I was finally right on the mixed tag match. I was right. Finally, I got a prediction right. So then, after that thrilling match that exceeded everyone's expectations, came the next match for the SmackDown Tag Team Titles and Triple Threat match involving the Usos defending at both the Bludgeon Brothers. And yes, we're crying another shirt change. It's a new day. Yes, it is. Done. New Galaxy. And it goes the Blood Gym Brothers. Uh, especially, once again, like the U.S. title match, they had to fall another awesome match. And this match was short but sweet to the point. The white team got over. It was good to see themselves finally get a main uh, show match for Mania. It's so real. They've been on the main roster for a long time, yet they've never been on the main card of Mania. They've been on a pre-show a couple times, but never the main card. And they finally got on it. They didn't get a chance to shine with their all-white outfits. And did a double splash. Uh, New Day's entrance was fucking insane. They had a bunch of little people... Dressed up as pancakes. <laughs> that was a surreal image. There's even Big Kong Bundy jokes on Twitter. If you don't get the reference, Mania 3, when he squashed the little person in a little person tag match with him, and now Hall of Famer, here Billy Jim. Um, New Dad had a little chance to shine. There was a ball early on. Uh, and Xavier got taken out early. Nice hair, Xavier, by the way. And Kobe had a big hat, like little morning wall colors on them. They had like, you know, that voodoo O's shirt. So you had the morning wall colors. Let's see him in a match this year after hosting last year. So Xavier got taken out by the Budge Brothers. The white team got over. Budge Brothers just destroyed both Usos and New Day for the first couple minutes. But despite rallying efforts from both Usos and the New Day, like I said, the white team got over. As Hope and Ward would team up with a power bump. On Kingston from off the top in the one, two, three victory for the Bludgeon Brothers winning. Happy for Will uh, Harper, especially. I've been saying it for uh, years when the Wyatts were together, the original Wyatt family. That Harper was my second favorite member of the Wyatt family. That he was a good talker and it was uh, one of the most athletic guys on the Wyatt family. Like for him being his height and his size, he's just a great athletic guy and he finally got. Photo bone by WWE after being overlooked for so long. He's finally in a good gimmick. The repackaging of him and Harper and Rowan was one of the best things that ever happened to him. It's kind of a weird gimmick with them and having new special masks for the night. I'll have to get a special mask too. I forgot to mention that. She had a special morning on mask. All bedazzled. Instead of her usual like scary green mask. But uh, this reboot, no one thought this gimmick change with the Bludgeon Brothers was going to work. With the hammers, but it actually surprisingly worked. Three 
point oh for this one as well. Just because like it was okay, it was a short match. Should have been better, especially two great teams in there had a tag team rivalry of the year. But the point was to make the Bunch of Brothers go over, and I was two for two. So yay! On to our John Cena segment. Forgot to mention this. After the Charlotte Oscar match, she you know, Cena was going to play off the fact that he was in the crowd. He got a message from a referee saying that he's here, assuming there was Undertaker. So we saw Cena come out, and the announcer actually said the following match is scheduled for one fall. I was like, oh my god, it's actually happening. But then another referee would come down. And say, it's not happening. Taker's not here. So it's like, really? They're going to have all this bill to have no Taker appearance. So Cena was walking back to the backstage area. The lights went out. And it was like, oh my god, it's Taker. Yay, it's Taker. But we were trolled. <laughs> By Elias! <laughs> There's a the segment for Elias tonight. He wasn't Strowman's partner. Spoiler. And he wasn't going to have that musical segment to walk. So instead, he was the troll to Cena. That was perfectly executed. You know, when Cena was walking up to the back, I was like, oh my god, take her! But then I heard a guitar string go off. I was like, it's Elias! Then a little feud, so it was going to come back to the little feud last winter. So Elias was going to sing a little song. He was playing a little bit of the song, The House of the Wising Sun, by the animals. To me, should have sung it. You know, there was a house in New Orleans. They called the Wising Sun. So, there's some good song parodies I forgot. <laughs> but, uh, so there's Elias, who's like, but there's someone else, and he got so much heat because it was such a troll move. And Cena, frustrated at the supposed lack of anger appearance, took out all his frustrations on Elias, and went with the five moves of Doom, the final of the shuffle, and the F you. And walk, about to walk out, his music hits, so I was like, okay, nothing's gonna happen. You know what I mean? So I was like, okay, this wasn't the moment I wanted, but hey, I got somewhat of a mania moment with Elias. You know, should have been somebody else. But then, the lights went out again. The gong hit. And yes, <laughs> First, the lights went out, and there was a hat in the coat in the glove that Tinker left after last year's mania. A lightning bolt struck it. The stuff disappeared, and then, bam! The Phenom Undertaker. Not the American badass Undertaker. There was some teasers and some rumors flying about him being the American badass Undertaker. But after seeing Triple H, for a good mention, he came out with Stephanie using a psycho entrance like last year's Mania. But this time he and Stephanie both had motorcycles. And Stephanie did do the entrance with Triple H. She spat the water. Then when she spits, not swallows. Anyway, so Tinker did come out as a phenom. Not the mega badass. Like I said, after seeing Triple H with a cycle, it was like, so he's no mega badass, huh? So Tinker came out in the mat. Happened. It was actually the like in hindsight, the booking was right. Yes, we questioned the booking four weeks of no taker answer. You know, it would not lead anything, but that was the point. You know, with Taker not showing up for those four weeks, it made us say, "Is it really going to happen?" Questioning ourselves, questioning things. Is it going to happen? Is Taker really going to wrestle Cena? Are they really going to save it last minute? Which they did. It was a white move to have a small build because it was a short match. Um, white call because Taker is getting old, getting up there. 
And it wasn't a long match to expose his weaknesses for being too old. But he actually looked pretty good. It was the strongest figure I've seen in a while. It looked actually fit for once. Especially, kind of a personal redemption story for him. Because he wants to do good in the same venue that the streak was broken in four years earlier. And knowledge. He destroyed Cena with big moves. The moment of the match for me was when Cena did try to find Ruth of Doom. As he was going for the five no shuffle, I was like, I kind of saw the spot coming. I was like, Take is going to set up, isn't he? But he did it, and it was still awesome to see him set up. I was like, Oh my God, that was a mock out moment there. And then Taker would grab Cena with a choke slam, tombstone, victory for Tucker, short and sweet. I'm happy, Taker. Got the win, and Cena's ego went aside. Of course, been making fun of him for years. But him being the man who's faster than a way Mysterio, more powerful than a big show, even a baby who is in a single bound. <laughs> Super Cena! But he's a part timer, so is Tanker. But that uh, Tanker win was like calm. And a short but sweet match. It could look good. And I'm happy they didn't have a short, a long match. Because like I said, it would have been, if it would have been long, it would have been boring, like the main event. <laughs> but, hey, great moment to see that match. The booking now makes sense. You know, now that the payoff happened, it now makes sense. They have a match with the two biggest names in the company, not announced officially and advertised until the media itself, with the teasing, it was perfectly executed. You know, I was happy. It wasn't a, uh, we'll see you next year, tease. I'm happy and happy. 3.0. But then, the slow decline began. As we would begin the decline. Because that would be a big segment match. It started declining. And kind of like I have to take a singer. There's a tag team match involving. Yep. Another t-shirt change. And then two left. Cut two shirts left. It'd be, of course, fighting to get back their jobs on SmackDown Live. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn against the commissioner of SmackDown Live, Shane McMahon, and back in active wrestling mode, being cleared, our SmackDown general manager. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Daniel Bryan. Big pop for him at the same place that he won the WWE Championship at Mania 30. I have an old Daniel Bryan shirt. I have two Daniel Bryan. I have the original. Yes, yes, yes. Maroon shirt. I got this one, so I wore this one. And like Mania 30, they had an injury angle at the beginning. Uh, Shane and KO came out, uh, not Shane and KO, Shane and Daybry came out by themselves. Daybry had a little entrance video with people doing the Yes Movement. And he came out, and KO and Sammy's music hit. That's really KO's music. But they came from the crowd, snuck from behind, attacked Daybry and Shane before the match started, taking out Daybry for the majority of the match with a bunker bomb. Like his match at Mania 30. When he had taken out by a Batista bomb all KO combo by Batista and Randy Orton. He was out for the majority of the match. They had a stretch of spot. They had it again. d by taken out for the most of the match. And he, uh, uh, ambulance stretch of spot. So Shane had to go it alone against d his frenemies, KO and Sammy. Then they do like the Haluva egg, uh, even the Blue Thunder bomb at one point to Shane. Shane did the out one of the numbers. Including doing a coast to coast, minus the trash can, on the Sami Zayn was trapped in the tree of war at one point. But then, after the pin, Owens would break it up, set up the Papa Power Bomb. He didn't do it once, but then he did a fox splash on the Shane. And then d miraculously got back and got. To break the pin, and then Shane came back with some big moves to get the tag to Daniel Bryan. He was the best part of the match for me. Shane, his performance was not as good as his match last year against AJ Styles. The performance was minimal, but D-Bryan looked incredible in there. He still had it. 
he knows the best part of the match. You know, the story, KO and Sammy with the famous knees and the strikes. For being a guy who has multiple concussions, it could still be unmedically clear at any time. He still looked good in there. You know what I mean? His family there, because we saw Bree in there, in the ringside area. He did a great hook and run on to Sammy Zayn from the top rope. That was cool. And then, um, the D Bryce strikes would go on after being taken out by a papa pa by my Sammy friend KO. And then, the yes kicks, not the ink kicks, but then you're buying here once they finish. You get, then you buy and get the Sammy Zayn up to do the ink kicks. The yes kicks, not the ink kicks. And then put Sammy into the yes lock. And yes, yes, yes. Stay by when Sammy Zayn tap out to the S lock. KO and Sammy lose. She and Deep by one. That was my first prediction. I lost. Because I was white right on Ticker and Cena happening. I was white right on the uh, the mixed tag. White right on the SmackDown Tag Team titles. You know, I was white right for like three in a row. I was white right on Ticker Cena happening and all that. But that was my first match. I got wrong since the US title match. I thought KO and Sammy would both the win. But hey, it's Daniel Bryan, he needs to win. Um, 2.7 for this one. First match to be winning under a 3.0. The match was what it was. Good moment for D-Bry. Winning the same venue he won at Media 30. And hugging his wife. But the big question is, what's left for Sammy and KO? They're still technically fired. What's going to happen? Are they going to go back to wall? Even go back to NXT, or oh, that should not happen. That's like a demotion. They have to go back to NXT. But maybe for Sammy, it won't feel like a demotion because I mean, NXT was when he was the most over. <laughs> so it might not be a demotion for the for, for Sammy Zayn specifically. It would be an uh, upgrade from his booking on the main roster. Kind of like that Dillinger's book. He did have a good moment in there. I forgot to mention that. He had a great 10 delete chant off with Matt Hardy. That was a cool spot. I don't want to show. There you go. Now on to our next affair. The women's title from War would not be defended. It's kind of interesting. It's high up on the card. Higher than Charlotte and Oscar. Should have been higher. But hey. Need a palate cleanser. And that's what this was. Nia Jax challenging Alexa Bliss. Being accompanied by Mickey James. But Nia wanted an even one-on-one -on -one affair. So she took out Mickey James right before the bell. Nano gets the balls and delivered a nasty small drop on her onto the floor. And we knew that Oscar Shaw would be the better of the two single women's title matches. I love Bliss. I've been admiring her moves. But she's still agreeing that Oscar would have been a good opponent for her if she didn't already beat Bliss already before Mania. Even before the Wumble, they had a singles match. But she had to work with Nia, who's got a big. Uh, Lexus is the best to kind of work with the disadvantage of being small and not heavy like Nia, but the match was okay. Bliss tries some big moves. Uh, a cool spot was when she did Twisted Bliss off the top onto the floor on Nia. That was a cool spot. That was probably one of the only really good spots in this match. Nia would come in with no big moves, big kicks. But Bliss was trying to play dirty a couple of times, including trying to get herself cut out. And even waking Nia in the eye, temporarily blinding her for a bit. And uh, it, it was like a rough match to watch. You know what I mean? Everyone knew this match was not going to be the best. And it kind of lived up to those little hype that it was up for. So they ended up towards the end of the match. As Jax was destroying Alexa. Even Alexa at one time like slapping Nia a couple of times saying, You're nothing without me. I made you. But then Nia was like, I loved you. And then delivered a nasty Alabama slam. Formcast went out for a little bit. Because I was using it for the network. But then we deliver a nasty top rope. Some more and drop on the Bliss. The second best spot. There was another best spot besides that. Twisted Bliss on the top. And some more and drop on the top. And the one, two, three victory for Nia Jax. We didn't see the Twisted DDT. But Nia got the victory. Despite the fat shaming, she got the victory over the goddess. And the goddess lost her second video in the world.
as champion. She lost in last year's Mania, as I mentioned, against Naomi in a multi-women match. Now she lost again to Nia. 2.5 as well for this. A 2.4. You know, and we had no cash in. Next up, um, kind of like the disappointment of the evening. Do I have another ship? I'm gonna need two shirts. Screw it, I'll just do the I'll just do the song without the without the shirt. It was for the WWE Championship. As the artist known as the King of Strong style, Shinsuke Nagamore will be challenging in my final, absolute final t-shirt change of the review. The phenomenal one, AJ Styles. So, uh, there's another song I'm gonna play for my reaction to this match. This was so highly anticipated. You know, it was like the Smoky fans match. You know, they had a great match at Wrestle Kingdom, and everyone was like, "Man, if they're allowed to wrestle the match, they should be allowed in WWE." Especially allowing Oscar and Charlotte to wrestle the match, they did. It would be amazing, spectacular, and it was really high on the card, so it was like, yay! This is going to be a very match that was going to live up to the hype. It's kind of interesting that there was a little bit of hype on the wild, the wild, the angle against Stephanie Triple H match. If people think the match was not going to live up to the hype, which it did, when it comes to Nakamura and AJ. <laughs> You're going to hear it. When it comes to AJ Nakamura, sorry boys, love you, but Public Enemy said it best. Don't believe it. Don't believe the high. Don't, don't, don't believe the high. Sorry boys, it did not deliver. Maybe it's because by this point the crowd was starting to be dead and the quality matches was starting to go down. Like this point remaining was starting to drag. You know what I mean? After Mixed Tag and after Tech Casino, the crowd was like dead. And this match was just slow going. Maybe because of time constraints as well. But man, this match was slow going. I was like, okay, slow burn. It's gonna get better. But it never did. They never got out of, they never got out of second gear. You know, like they had a little couple of striking exchanges. Nakamura did a striking game, the good vibrations, all the good stuff. But as he got targeted throughout the match by AJ, you really suck with him, especially dealing the calf crusher a couple of times and doing the phenomenal form and did all of his fashy moves. And even these are Styles Clash. And even doing a 450 after the uh, after the uh, phenomenal four inch after the 450, but then Nakamura would block it with the knees and roll up AJ into a pin. And then like a kid shot set to the back of the head. That was the only attempt that a kid shot set tonight, and the only one that was nailed. So I guess we know Pele. So then Nakamura deal towards the finish. He went for the reverse exploded. That was the cue for the kid shot up. The full one to the front. For the Shinsuke was going for it. AJ would counter it. Roll up. And turn it into the Styles Clash. And the one. Two. Wow. AJ retained. Over Shinsuke Nakamura. Both Royal Rumble winners. Lost their matches. 
that remains racist. <laughs> Both their Japanese stars won the Royal Rumble and lost their Mania matches. This is the first time since WrestleMania 32 that a Royal Rumble winner did not win his Mania match. That was Triple H. Yeah, he technically won the title of the Rumble, but he still won the Rumble, but lost his Mania match. Last year, Randy Orton won the Rumble and also won his Mania match. This year, we had two Rumble matches, and both winners lost their Mania matches. Crazy. 3.5. You know, it's no good, but should have been a lot better. And it certainly, like I said, did not live up to the hype that everyone was building. I know some people may say, oh, it was a good match. But to me, my opinion, it didn't live up to the hype. But the best part was, we may get a better match out of them. And only if we put on a better match at SummerSlam. Because the feud is definitely continuing. Especially in a moment that nobody saw coming. So we saw a... Attempted show of showmanship, like the Charlotte Oscar match. Shame, uh, AJ was being pulled up by Shinsuke, but raised his arm. He didn't deliver a knee to face during the match, but he delivered arm to bars. Yep. Shinsuke and Gamora sucking MJ, sucking AJ, turned heel, and delivered a low blow. I was like, what? I was on Twitter throughout the show, and right before that moment, I saw somebody tweeted, Is Shinsuke turning? Is he turning heel? Then it really crossed my mind about Shinsuke turning heel until I saw that tweet. Five seconds later, Shinsuke turns heel! Holy shit! That guy was pathetic! So then he was beat up on AJ after a little blow, and then a nasty Kinshasa on the floor. Who would have thought? Since gave a turn heel. And actually would do a wonders. Especially if they're not failing after failing to connect on main roster thus far. But who'd have thought the wall NXT guy would turn heel? Bobby Wood should turn heel. But since gave turning heel would be very interesting. It's kind of a heel turn weekend. We had Roderick Strong turning heel and Jordy Dallas Madeira, which I'm looking forward to seeing how that's gonna work. And now since gave turn heel. So I wonder how that's going to look. So if you and AJ is continuing, hopefully to get another match and a better one. And be able to have a better match, a better time, and less constraints. So then on to the, the other booking blunder of the evening. Especially with so far up the court. It was the Wall tag team title match as the bar coming up to the own Mardi Gras people and stuff would be taking on Sorry. I'm trying to get a cue here. Uh, like the ball we're going to defend against Braun Strowman, who surprisingly won a war battle war by himself, and a mystery partner. We were like hyping it up for weeks about who was it going to be. Speculation about who his partner was going to be. We were like, okay, I haven't seen Elias earlier. What's it going to be Elias? What's it going to be? Some more Joe. We're turning some more Joe. Will it be a debut Bobby Lashley? I heard he was in New Orleans. Made for WrestleCon, but still, he was in New Orleans. But I was like, man, it better not be Big Show. But the, it was wasn't Big Show. So instead of picking, like, you know, instead of Elias, or some more Joe, or Bobby Lashley, who did Braun Strowman pick as his partner? A kid. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Bad decision. Now, don't get me wrong. Short term, yes, the kid who almost looked like a girl. I thought I was going in the crowd to bake somebody for real, like a planet fan. I even saw No Way Jose there in a suit. I thought he maybe he could be a surprise, but he picked a kid named Nicholas. Yes, short term, feel good moment. A kid got a mania moment with him 
teamed up with Braun Strowman, and he got tagged, and he got popped. You know, like a film movie for the kid. But long-term, bad booking, it made the Raw Tag Team Division into a fucking joke. It was already a joke having a single guy win a tag team battle royal over other tag teams that should have got the shot, including the revival, who are still buried as hell. And then they destroyed the entire Raw Tag Team Division by having Strowman win it. Now, I had a suspicion Strowman was going to win. And I got the prediction right. After being isolated by the ball on the yard, and having attacked the neck and being tagged back, delivered a power slam on to Cesaro in the victory for Braun Strowman and his partner. Now, I predicted that. I was right on that prediction, but why was it so high up on the coin? If that was going to be the outcome, you know, Strowman picking a kid or a random audience member. That match should have not been where it was. Should have been low on the card. Because I was like, okay, this tag team title match, especially was like 11 at that point. We knew at that point we were going to midnight. Five hour mania. Seven hours we got the pre-show. And we were like, it's so up on the card. I mean, something big's got to happen. Like a debut or a return. But nope. It was a random kid. No offense to the kid, but Bad booking decision in the long term. Because who the hell is going to see with Strowman now? Maybe they're going to reveal his real partner on the best wall of the year tomorrow. But till then, 2.0. I need 2.2. So, there you go. So, love Strowman, but should have been the fucking main event. Especially seeing how the main event went. He would have won the main event tonight. Over that stupid woman. So, he should have been in the main event tonight. Instead, he was in search of a tag team pitcher and basically buried the tag division tonight with the tag team titles. But hey, I thought Enzo buried the Cruiserweight division when he won the title. But actually, he ended up being a really decent one. Jerry got fired for lying to his boss about being arrested for rape. Those charges are dropped. Come back? But, if that was going to be the payoff, shouldn't have done it at all. There was not going to be a real payoff. They should never have that storyline with Braun at all. But, now that he's a champion, maybe he will pick a real partner in the mall. Maybe be forced to pick a new partner in the mall. Because he's not going to defend the title against anybody against, with Nicholas. You know, it's a good moment for him to say, hey, I got to be in the ring with Braun Strowman in WrestleMania. Short term, like I said, yes. But long term, bad decision. Speaking of bad decision, the main event. <laughs> More than four beautiful. It was Roman Reigns. And it was up against Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship. The bill was decent, and the Mania 31 match was not that bad in retrospect. But man, there was a lot of elements. With the match going last, and the fans knew what was going to happen, or thought they knew what was going to happen. And it was, it was like 11.30 by the time this match was going on. And the fans were tired and wanted to go home. And this match we were least looking forward to seeing the most. Because of the predictability. Or thought predictability. They trolled the fuck out of this match. Lots of bruise for women as expected. Cheers for Lesnar. And it was a fight. But the crowd trolled it. They, you know, they knew... They thought they knew it was like Roman was going to win. So they decided to troll the match, booing it. I heard there were a bunch of beach balls involved. I thought they banned beach balls, but it snuck them in. Uh, then there was a CM Punk chant. God damn it. There was even a Johnny Wrestling chant. It was that bad. Uh, you got a couple suplexes from Lesnar. And then a couple so many punches by Roman. There were so many finishers. They pulled the outside for a bit. And then came like a barrage of F5s. Like four or five F5s. Roman kicked out of all of them. So much for protecting the F5. You know, Samoa Joe taking out after one F5. Strowman chugging out after one F5. Roman ate like five. And then he got nailed. I think he got nailed with an elbow. And Roman got cut bad. 
Even then, they didn't get the crowd. Like, the crowd was, like, so disinterested because they knew Woman was going to win. There's like, fuck, Woman, this again. You know, let's say that Woman will win the title. You know what I mean? We want a full-time champion again, but not Woman. So, everyone was, like, disinterested, especially with so long in the night. And the matches kind of went downhill for the most part. And, like, the crowd just trolled it. But, and the match was sucky. It, it, it affected it. The crowd affected the match. Because the match kind of sucked because of it. And it was probably one of the most main event events since last year. Kind of a weird ending. You know, you had a, you had a, you had a great start, a weird middle, a shitty finish once again. Despite just a great start to it. But as uh, Lesnar kept piling the F5s, Storm would come back, a woman would come back some big moves, including a spear. And go for all the Sumi punches. And then that's when he did the elbows and cut woman's head. He was bleeding bad. So much for no blood by the Louisiana State Athletic Commission. But I heard those bands were not void for WWE. Were not valid for WWE or Ring of Honor. All the Indies had to apply by the stupid rules by the Louisiana State Commission, like no pile drivers. Anyway, it was a fight, but a boring one. And then after the Cut for Woman. Woman did two spears, but then ate another F5. And the one, two. What? Wow. Lesnar retained. Holy hell. Vince outsmarted the fans again. Like at the War one, we thought, oh, Reigns is going to win. But he didn't. And then saying with tonight, oh, Lesnar's going to lose. No, Reigns won. Who did dunk it? The guy we wanted to see win a U.S. title match lost. Rusev. And the guy we thought was not going to lose actually lost. Roman wins. There's good and bad in that equation. Uh, good, woman lost. Yay, woman lost. Awesome, woman lost. Bad news is, Lesnar still champion. Let me say that again. A poor timer is still a champion. I think mean, it didn't matter who won. The fans were gonna lose, no matter what. Either Wolverine was gonna win and get booed out the fucking building and a white would he whooped, or Lesnar wins instead of a part time champion. We need Lesnar to lose the title. We still need a full-time champion. And we need it tomorrow. On wall. The best wall of the year. Stuff that should happen. Should happen in the next couple of days. Like. A cash in from Camilla. And. A. Lesnar losing the title. Happy to lose the woman. But still. He's the champion. A part-time champion. Still champion. And. Maybe a troll. Saying. I'm not going to UFC. Maybe that's why he won. Because there's so much speculation about him going back to the UFC. He was saying it on the microphone. And it was probably Vince's way of saying, Fuck you, man. Les is not going to UFC. So, kind of a weird troll move. But, what does that mean for the title? We need the full-time champion again. By the way, 2.5. You know, the Masters boy, the, the fans are trolled to hell. Some say it was deserved. Some say it wasn't. No matter what, it was a shitty way to end Mania. Combination of the fans, combination of the action not being good, not as good as last time, and the fact Wayne's lost. It's like I said, like I said, good thing and a bad thing. Good thing he did not win. Because we wanted anyone but woman to be a full time champion. But the big question is who the fuck's going to be Lesnar now? Who's going to beat him? Who's going to be a full time champion? Maybe we turn some more on Joe? Maybe Strowman? But they both lost to him! So. I wonder where this goes from here. Would it be a rematch at SummerSlam that Lesnar finally loses? Are we not waiting that long for another championship match? And we need Lesnar to lose. So, lots of questions. More questions than answers. Kind of like weird booking decisions. Strowman so getting a kid to be his partner and Lesnar retaining and still part time champion. So, where are we going from here? Where do we go? Where do we go now? Where do we go?
Where do we go? And there was a cool moment. Uh, last was said by the effort, and it was bleeped. That was the only real funny part of the match. So there you go. That's my review for Mania. I'll give it once again my final rating is 6.5. Deduct a few points for the lackluster last couple hours because matches after the mixed match challenge, mixed match tag match, and the take a Cena match after that, the matches started declining in quality. Especially disappointment in the AJ Shinsuke match. Didn't live up to the hype. Maybe they get a rematch and do better. We'll so see. He's a future continue of Shinsuke's heel turn. So, like I said, where do we go from here? See ya. We won't review them all. With that in mind, you've been attacked by this review from Zach. I was I had a feeling this was gonna be long. My main review was long last year. And it's long again this year. So if you made it this fall, I applaud you for tolerating this. If you fast forward to the end, hi. <laughs> so that being said, you've been attacked by the review from Zach. See ya. Bye-bye.